As I mentioned in the course introduction, we will start with uh, two port nonlinear networks. Okay. Now, we do that because we will find that everything that we use to build amplifiers with are nonlinear, all devices. Okay. Of course, I think you have already studied extensively linear systems, both which are independent of frequency and also which are dependent on frequency. Okay. Now, we will study, now we will study uh, nonlinear systems in some detail. Okay. Why do we need nonlinear systems at all? Why can't we do everything we want with linear systems? Remember, our goal is to make amplifiers. Okay. Later, we will find that everything needs an amplifier, whether it is uh, uh, whether the device itself is an amplifier or something else. Eventually, somewhere we need gain, that is, we need amplification. Okay. It is with amplifier devices that you build everything, including digital circuits, as we will see later. Okay. So, now, uh, what I just said was, we need to uh, know how to analyze nonlinear circuits in order to be able to analyze amplifiers and so on, because they all turn out to be nonlinear devices. Now, uh, what is an amplifier? Something like what we are using just now. I am speaking into the microphone and it is coming out much louder through the loudspeaker. So, between the microphone and the loudspeaker, there is an amplifier, okay, which is providing power gain. That is the whole point of it. I mean, I could not shout so that the whole class could uh, hear. So, I use an amplifier and the microphone collects actually a very small amount of power. It is not even collecting all of the sound that I am making, but it will uh, amplify and I put out a lot of power from the loudspeaker. Okay, so it provides power gain. Now my assertion is that to have power gain, we need to have nonlinearity. Okay, why is that? Why could we not have power gain from linear systems, or could we have it? What do you think? Is there any? We won't be studying nonlinear systems if there was no reason to, right? You know that nonlinear circuit analysis is a lot more difficult than linear ones. There are very, very effective techniques for solving linear circuits. Okay, you can solve any linear circuit, any linear system exactly, whereas nonlinear stuff you can only solve approximately. Okay, you won't go through all this pain if it was not necessary. So, what do you think is the reason? A microphone. And this should give power gain. Could it be linear? We can add anything else we want. We can have anything we want with this. Okay. Let us say linear system with uh, power sources and so on. But could we have power gain from linear systems? If not, why not? One thing we have to remember is that everything other than batteries are passive, right? They only dissipate power. Okay, that is true whether it is linear or nonlinear or whatever. Okay. Finally, I mean nothing can produce power by itself, right? You have to power put power into it. So the meaning of power gain is that so let us say in this case I have my voice and I will just say that it is a 1 kilohertz signal, of course, it is not a single sinusoid, it is a complex spectrum and this is also the same signal, 1 kilohertz, but the power that comes out is much more than the power that went into the amplifier, okay, that is the meaning of having power gain, okay. I also said that every circuit, basically everything is passive except power sources like batteries. Okay. That is the common power source that we use.
okay for instance the amplifier that is being used right now also runs off some power supply doesn't use a battery probably but it uses the main supply to get some uh, dc okay where does the power come from the power coming out of the loudspeaker clearly i am not shouting as loudly as the loudspeaker okay so it's adding some power the amplifier is adding some power where is that coming from it has to be coming from where from the power supply okay you have to have an additional power supply and that power supply somehow supplies this power to I'll just show it like a battery but it could be from the mains power you convert it to uh, DC and so on okay so there will be some power source in the system okay even then I claim that this system cannot be linear that is you take whatever battery you want you take a linear circuit and arrange it any way you want it could be as complicated as you want but I cannot make something like this amplifier okay where I shout into the microphone and a much louder shout comes out of the loudspeaker okay you can add battery you can add multiple batteries if you wish to all that is fine what do you think this is we do need nonlinear systems What is the basic feature of linear systems? Linear system. It obeys superposition. Okay. Now please think about it and tell me. Yes, Joseph. Hmm. Sit down, sit down. Limit to what? No, that's correct. So, in linear, then if you establish the split output also, increase like that. Yeah, let it increase. That's okay. The input can be 1 milliwatt, the output can be 1 watt. Okay. And if the input becomes 2 milliwatts, the output becomes 2 watts and so on. So, input becomes 2000 watts, the output becomes 2000 watts. That's okay. You are talking about operating limits. Anyway, I mean, if you assume a linear system, if the output input becomes 2000 watts, the output will be whatever, 2 megawatts or whatever. <laughs> okay. What is the consequence of superposition here? Huh? Why? No. This nothing to do with I am talking about basic amplification, okay? None of this other fancy features here. I am saying that you cannot even get this functionality that is I put in a milliwatt into the microphone and uh, get out a watt from the loudspeaker and I have external batteries and all these things but I simply cannot do this with a linear system. <coughs> hmm? Yes? Whatever power you get from the external source is independent. Ah, okay. You are getting there but in what way? Please refine the argument. You get amplification but it will not be Hmm. Okay. So no, no, that's not. Uh, I mean, everything is adding power. I mean, multiplication. I also can think of addition as addition, right? If I say p times ten, I'll get p plus nine p. So <laughs> yeah. No, please go. Yes, mother. Hmm. What is the standard uh, form of superposition that you keep using all the time? I mean, what what does superposition mean for you? You would have used superposition in an analysis all the time, right? Yeah. How did you use it? Huh? You never used it. Linear combination of? Okay. So, how did you use that actually? 
So, in this scenario, so let's say I have a source, this is a representation of the microphone, okay, some uh, voltage source, Vs, and this is a representation of the DC power supply, Vdc, and this is a representation of the load, okay. And the standard way you would uh, use superposition to analyze this, there are so many ways to do that, if it were linear. Vs, RL and this is 0. or this is 0, I have VDC and RL, okay, and I can solve for these two individually, okay. So, let us say I get some V1 here and V2 there, okay. Now, V1 is purely because of the signal Vs and V2 is purely because of the battery VDC, it is another signal, but at let us say 0 frequency or DC, okay. Now what? What next? Exactly. So, now I already said that this is passive, right. So, clearly in this case, the power that is dissipated in RL, the power that is provided to RL is less than what is supplied here. It cannot be more. This is the only source, right. In the upper uh, case, the only source is the signal source. So, and we will only get less power than that, okay. Now, in this case, we have some signal VDC and we do get some, uh, uh, some signal here due to this VDC. Okay, and the total voltage is V1 plus V2, but only V1 is due to the signal. Okay, and that doesn't change whether you have this DC bias or not, isn't it? The signal part of it doesn't change whether you have the DC bias or not. Is that correct? That's the meaning of a linear system, right? I have a signal source, I have a power source. Now, if it is, uh, if the system is linear, I can decompose this into two systems, one in which I apply only the signal source, one in which I have only the DC, okay. Now, if you look at the first scenario where I apply only the signal, then the signal source will provide some power and at the output you will only get less power than that, okay. And similarly, when you have DC only, the DC supply will, DC will supply some power and some of it will go to the uh, load, but it will going to be less than what is being supplied by the DC. But anyway, that is not our concern. Our concern is whether the signal power can be increased and you can clearly see that it cannot be, okay, because the amount of signal you get on the load, the signal voltage you get on the load is independent of whether you have a bias source, whether whatever power supply you have, you can have 10 different batteries connected in whatever fancy way. The signal voltage that you get across the load will be the same, whether you connect only the signal or signal and some 100 other batteries, okay. So, if it is a linear system, you simply cannot convert any of this power from uh, VDC into a form that looks like it is from the signal, okay. A DC source will apply a DC voltage to the load and it will uh, do something like it will give you a uh, some DC power but it is not going to somehow give you an effectively larger signal power. Is this okay? So, another way to think about it is, I mean normally this does not have to be always the case. So, this is a signal let us say at 1 kilohertz, okay and this is you can think of this as signal at 0 hertz, right. It is a DC battery, okay. By the way, I have been a little sloppy here. I should also say linear time invariant. For now, we will assume time invariance for every circuit, okay. 
So all circuits are time invariant. So this is linear time invariant. Okay. What is the feature of uh, linear time invariant systems? I mean, you would have studied this in networks and systems, right? Uh, if you have a certain kind of source, let's say a sinusoidal source at one kilohertz, what's the characteristic of the solution? Hmm? Yeah, scaled and phase shifted, but what is the solution that you get? Also on 1 kilohertz only, right? So if you have a <coughs> signal, if you have an input at uh, 1 kilohertz, the output will be only at 1 kilohertz. Similarly, if you have a signal at DC, the output due to that will be only at DC. There is no way the DC battery can convert some of its power into the, uh, into the signal frequency, okay? There is no frequency conversion, right? In a linear time invariant system, you have a signal at a certain frequency, the output will be only at certain frequency. But what do we want our amplifier to do? We want to take some of the DC power and convert it into signal power. So somehow the DC, the 0 hertz part of it had to get converted to this 1 kilohertz signal frequency. But that is not going to happen in a linear time invariant system. Okay? Is this clear or is it too fuzzy? Any questions about this? What I was trying to argue here is that we do need nonlinear systems. If you have linear systems, you cannot convert the power that is being delivered by the power supply into the signal frequencies, into a form that is useful for you. Okay? Any questions about this? Are you convinced that we need nonlinear systems? Or at least linear systems are not good enough? Linear time invariant systems are not good enough? A linear time invariant system cannot convert frequencies. And you should realize immediately that that is how, well, even if you do not know the details, that is how the amplifier is operating. The amplifier box itself does not generate any power, okay. It is being driven by the microphone signal which is very small and the battery which can deliver as much power as it wants. So it has to convert some of that battery power into the power that is going out into the loudspeaker at the signal frequency. That is what we want also, right. I do not want power at some other frequency. I want my voice to be amplified, okay. So, from this, uh, please think about this, the arguments are all qualitative and you can just uh, make it more quantitative by calculating the powers here and so on. As long as you assume that this is passive, that is this block will only dissipate power and it is linear, you will not be able to get power gain from a linear time invariant system, okay. This is fine, okay. Okay, so we do have to go to some form of nonlinearity. Exactly what form is useful, we'll see. Okay, but at least they should convince you that we have to study nonlinear systems in order to be able to build amplifiers. Fine. Okay. Now even nonlinear systems are also passive, okay, they will only dissipate power. But the thing is you can have multiple sources of power, one of which is the signal, the others could be batteries and it converts some of the battery power into power at the signal frequency. That is possible with a nonlinear system, okay. Now if you look at the overall nonlinear system, it is also only heating up, it is also only dissipating power, that is why we have the battery, okay. But at least it is able to convert, it will be able to convert some of the battery power into the signal power, okay. That is the idea. Uh, power amplification is defined as okay. and this cannot be done at all.
Oke. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we won't go into that now. Now uh, linear time varying systems. We still have to define passivity in some way. Okay. That's why I didn't get into those complications. For instance, you can make a system linear time uh, variant by having a switch and operating it periodically. Okay. But if you define the switch to be controlled by something that doesn't draw any power at all, normally when you draw a symbol like this, okay, so this will not uh, draw any power uh, at all, okay. So this kind of thing can do frequency translation, okay. But I don't want to get into any of those complications, so that's why I'll leave it, okay. What I am trying to say is that uh, the way you draw the symbol, I mean you could imply power amplification directly in the symbol whereas we are trying to build it up from real components that we can later uh, fabricate. Okay. For instance, I mean the easiest way of saying build an amplifier which you know is this. Okay. So if this is V i and this is V o, you can put any number here. Okay, this will give you power amplification, but this is not passive at all. You cannot build it directly. Okay, in fact, to build this also, you will need to go to some nonlinear element or the other. So I'm trying to avoid all these things. I'm saying that the system is passive, and also I use the linear time invariant stuff. So because the arguments are easier. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do is first. Uh, so we'll just first now uh, take it that with linear systems you cannot get power gain. With non-linear systems you could possibly do that. And we will now try to find the characteristic of a non-linear system which gives us some gain. And we'll try to maximize that gain and see what kind of device we'll need. Okay. So for that we'll first brush up uh, analysis of non-linear stuff which you've already seen. I think all of you have seen it in uh, some class or the other. And the nonlinear system I'll start off with is a nonlinear two port network. Okay. I'll take a two port network because an amplifier, you think of an amplifier, you have some input and some output. You have two ports at least, right? Okay. And I'll have V1, I1, V2, and I2. And in general, I1 is some function of uh, V1 and V2, and I2 is some function of some other function in general of V1 and V2. Okay. Is this fine? So now, let us say that, how did we normally analyze this? What did we do with this? We know that this kind of uh, representation is not very useful, right? Because we cannot analyze nonlinear equations in general. Okay. So what did we do earlier? We set up some operating point and analyze it around that. Basically, we fake it and say that it's a linear system for small excursions around the operating point. Okay. So first, we set up. an operating point and let us say that is by applying V10 and V20. So the operating points are I10 is F1 of V10, V20 and I20 is F2 of V10, V20. Okay. Now remember earlier I said that uh, 
yeah, we have a system in which we have a single source, we have a battery and all these things and here I am not drawing the battery, okay. I just took a two port for simplicity. But you see that clearly for establishing the operating point, essentially we have batteries there, okay. To say that we establish an operating point at V10 and V20 is somewhat like connecting V10 battery at the input, V20 battery at the output and establishing the operating point, okay. So that is all included here, I did not uh, do any cheating, okay. So now, around this operating point, Let us say we have signals or basically incremental signals V1 and V2, okay. So clearly from the expressions for the uh, two port, we will have I1 is F1 of V10 plus V1 and V20 plus V2 and I2 is F2 of V10 plus V1 and V20 plus V2, okay. Whereas the operating point equations were So the next step is obvious, I think something you have done before. We look at only the increments in the currents, okay. So if we see the increment I1 around the operating point is I1 minus I10, okay. And I have to take these two and subtract, okay. Now what do we get in an approximate sense? What is it that we get? Yes, Ashwini. What do we get? Incremental? Yeah, that is the incremental current, but how much is that in terms of the voltages? What is that? Yeah. So, you will get the difference between these two nonlinearities, but if you expand this around the operating point V10, V20, you will get a Taylor series now with two variables and you will have the first derivative times V1 and second derivative times V1 square or V1, V2 or V2 square and so on, okay. Now, clearly we are going to neglect all the higher derivatives assuming that the increment V1 and V2 that is lowercase V1 and V2 are small, okay. This is something we have done for both one port and two ports. So this will be the difference between these two and for small increments, approximately equal to and this has to be calculated at the operating point that is very important, right, times V1 plus also at the operating point times V2 and all the higher order terms are neglected, okay. And similarly, the increment in current I2 is approximately The first derivative with respect to V1 times V1 plus the first derivative with respect to V2 times V2, okay. Finally, we reduced everything to 
the equations that uh, you get from a linear two port. The only thing is now these apply only to the incremental quantities, okay, not to the total quantities that you apply to the nonlinear circuit. These are the incremental quantities around the operating point, and assuming also that the increments are small enough to neglect higher order derivatives, okay. So, the increments themselves can then be related. First, let me draw the full picture. This is V10 plus V1. And V20 plus V2, I10 plus I1, I20 plus I2, and this is the nonlinear two port. And if you represent Only the increments, we will get a picture like this. And what is this circuit? This is the linear small signal equivalent circuit. Okay. That is the linear small signal equivalent circuit of the original nonlinear circuit. And the most important thing is this is also at the relevant operating point which is V10, V20. Okay. So, this relates only the incremental quantities assuming that they are small enough. And what is small enough? You cannot tell, I mean there is no absolute limit, it is not 1 millivolt or 1 volt. 1 volt could be small in some context, 1 millivolt could be large in some other context. It is basically uh, the magnitude of the signal at which all the higher order derivatives can be neglected. That is the only possible definition. Okay. So, clearly this behaves like a linear two port and we do use the linear two port uh, representation. Where this these four parameters are the incremental y parameters at the operating point. Any questions so far? These are just representations. We took a nonlinear circuit, we set up the operating point V10, V20, and any signal can be thought of as the operating point plus something. Okay. There is nothing special there. I can represent anything as anything else plus something. Okay. So, the significant thing comes when that increment is small enough. Okay. When the increment is small enough, then to decide, I mean to determine the increments in the currents, you can only use the, you can use only the first order terms in the Taylor series. Okay. That is the significant part that is keeping the increments small. Okay. So, around the operating point for small increments, these uh, uh, quantities can be related in a linear fashion. And the first derivatives, in this case, by the way, I took uh, for the nonlinear functions, I took currents as functions of voltages. Okay, that is not necessary. I could take voltages as functions of currents, or I could take voltage on one side and current on the other side, and so on. All those things are possible, and you will get different types of uh, parameters. But uh, this turns out to be related to the commonly available devices, so we will use this. Okay, we will uh, most of the time end up using y parameters. Okay. And these uh, incremental y parameters are nothing but the first derivatives at the operating point. Okay. So, for instance, y11 would be first derivative of f1 with respect to v1 at the operating point. Okay. So, now that around the operating point it is uh, linear, we can use all our linear, linear circuit techniques to analyze this circuit. Okay, and that is what we will do. So, now to relate it to uh, let us say the amplifier that I have been talking about, you can think of the batteries as setting up the operating point and this microphone signal as the incremental signal applied to one of the sides of the amplifier, the input side of the amplifier. Is that okay?
So let me show only the incremental part. Let's say that the operating point has been set up. Okay, there are various ways of setting it up. We won't worry about exactly how, but uh, they are set up. And I'll show the microphone as some source, okay, some voltage source in series with a resistance. I mean, nothing special here. From Thevenin's theorem, you know that anything can be represented as a voltage source in series with a resistance, okay. And the loudspeaker is some load resistance RL, okay. And the operating point has already been set up. We won't worry about that, but because we know the operating point, we also know the incremental y parameters. Sorry, I one. Okay, you understand. So in this, we'll try to calculate the gain. Now instead of going through the complications of calculating power gain, we'll simply calculate the voltage gain. Okay. If you have the voltage gain, you can also calculate the power by squaring the voltages, dividing by the appropriate resistances and so on. So first thing you do is please calculate the voltage gain of this, that is the voltage across RL, VL divided by Vs. Please calculate this now. See, we already know this y1 is y11 v1 plus y12 v2 and i2 is y21 v1 plus y22 v2 okay to this we simply have to add other constraints one of which from the input side we know that v1 is vs minus i1 rs okay and here on the other side V2 is related to I2 okay and also by the way VL is simply equal to V2 so what we have to calculate is V2 by Vs and what is V2? V2 is minus I2 RL okay so these are things that we have to add to that one okay. So if I write the first one, I will get Y11 V1 plus Y12 V2. This is equal to I1 and I will equate that to I1 that I get from here, okay, which is V1 by RS, sorry, Vs by RS minus V1 by RS, okay. And similarly, Y21 V1 plus y22 v2 would be equal to i2 which I again get from the other one minus v2 by rl okay so I have to eliminate uh, v2 from this to get the whole uh, expression okay so this one gives me or let me first do this this gives me y21 v1 to be equal to minus y22 plus 1 by rl times v2. So this one gives me y11 plus 1 by rs times v1 plus y12 times v2 and v2 I can get from here, okay, which is y21 by Y22 plus 1 by RL, okay, times V1. This will be equal to, oh, I should eliminate V1, right? I think I did the wrong thing here. Let me do that. Yeah, so. I'll do this, I'll have Y11 plus 1 by RS times V1 and V1 I'll get from the other expression which is minus 
y22 plus 1 by rs divided by y21 times v2 plus huh? 1 by rs minus y22 plus 1 by rs thank you y22 v2 is minus uh, y12 v2 is vs by rs okay so from this i can get v2 by vs so v2 by vs turns out to be what is that y21 divided by y12 y21 minus y11 plus 1 by rs y22 plus 1 by rl and we had a rs here right 1 by rs is this correct okay and i'll rewrite this uh, like this just for Okay, and it's actually easier if you had chosen to write things in terms of conductances y21 gs by y11 plus gs y22 plus gl minus y12 y21. Okay, so please think about this expression and see how this can be maximized. Okay, this is v2 by vvs we want to maximize this also we want to eliminate any possibility of this going to infinity that shouldn't happen okay because infinity means what whatever happened when i was standing there without any input it was giving an output you don't want that to happen okay Unstabil instability so you don't want that to happen so we'll uh, take it from there tomorrow we want to maximize this expression without letting it go to infinity okay that gives us the constraints on these y parameters.